Hey everyone, so iOS 14 beta 2 has been released yesterday and having had it installed for just around, well, just under a day now, I wanted to just make a quick video detailing some of the, the, the changes that I've noticed already. There will be other YouTubers that will make a lot more in-depth videos, so they'll literally list every single change. In this video, I just basically wanted to concentrate on the things that um, would impact my usage and anybody who has similar setups with regards to home kit and things like that will also impact them as well so the first one that i actually noticed was with regards to the control center as i mentioned in the original uh video with beta one they have actually introduced these little fast toggles essentially for within the control center so rather than having to actually click and hold on this you have uh, certain uh, toggles that actually come up automatically. Now on beta one, what it was actually doing was it was giving you more or less scenes. So was, there was one scene there, one scene there, and one scene there. And obviously it takes up quite a lot of room and you only end up with three actual toggles that you can make use of. Now, what I have found is it is similar to what they did mention in the keynote where they would basically change uh, depending on the time of day. So essentially yesterday when I was actually originally gonna film this video, I only had three scenes here. So it basically brought up that one, YouTube on. It had the one that I normally use in my room, which is, I don't know if it shows up in this main list or not, but if I just come to, yeah, so it had bedtime, it had mood light, and it had the YouTube one. So it was only giving this three three options, basically. And obviously, if you've got toggles here, the, the, the uh, scene toggles, basically take up the same space as two of these icons. So if you've not got the, the, the scenes, then you've got the icons instead. It actually means that you can get a lot more on the screen. And what I've noticed is whenever it's not detecting the scene, so depending on the time of day, so at night, it's basically giving you scenes that it thinks that you're gonna use at night. So basically where you switch off all the lights and you, you dim lights and things like that, or you switch on these kind of LEDs or uh, side lamps rather than using just uh, your, your ceiling lights, for example. So what I did notice was, say for example, if I come into here and let me just think. So if I switch on both of the, the kids' lamps and switch them off, neither of these were in that list initially. Now, if I just come out of it and go back in, what was happening yesterday was they were actually popping up here. So it is a little random still and there's no set way where you can actually choose which ones you want there just yet but it, it is still at least a little bit better than than it was with just the scenes because the scenes basically only end up with three whereas this way as you can see that light there that's one that i use quite commonly my lamp obviously it, it, it just means that rather than having to um for example and this obviously works it should work from the lock screen as well so yeah so you don't even have to unlock your phone, literally just on your lock screen, you swipe up and you can turn the lights on or off. And it's, it's just as responsive as it would be um, if obviously the phone was unlocked. So that was the, the first change that I actually noticed. Now, the one thing that I did check was, I was hoping that maybe they might have in introduced the, it's a bit laggy there. Um, they might have introduced the color changing option on uh, any smart bulbs. Unfortunately, I did test that with the living room ones yesterday. Where's, where are they gone? Yeah, with this one, obviously it's not on at the moment. That's why it's gonna show not, uh, not responsive. But I did test that yesterday with basically just going into the settings and seeing if there's any option. So essentially it looks exactly the same as this. So it literally just gives you the same options to edit the colors and things. And then you, when you swipe up, you, you get your, your your scenes essentially that um, you already have set up. So all your automations and also any possible scenes down here, but it doesn't actually give you any option for the, the day night. So the, I mean, essentially this is also a color changing light. So you would think, um, even though this is listed as a lamp, essentially it, it, it should still come under the same thing. So I don't know whether if I say, for example, if I switch this to just a normal bulb, there's still no day and night option there. So I'll just switch that back seeing as that's what I had them on. But essentially what it's meant to do is obviously throughout the day, it'll, it'll gradually change the color temperature for you. And it just means that you don't have to actually adjust it yourself. So if in the mornings, obviously, if you do prefer a bluer uh, tone to the, or bluer hue to your light, uh, which generally I, I do prefer, but at night, obviously it will, um, make it more difficult for you to actually get to sleep. So the, the warmer tone as as with the phone screens, it does help. 
um, and that's obviously something that is still not fully baked in. Now the other change that I did actually notice was also from control center. So this particular toggle, the um, sleep, I, th I think I referred to it as bedtime, but essentially I think it's just a, uh, a sleep timer and that's actually, it's not actually in the same position it used to be. So now it's actually in the health app. And what you have to do is in order to get to it, initially what will happen is if you hold on this particular icon, in your control center, it'll actually um, prompt you. So it'll open up the health app and it will go straight in. But once you've actually set it up the first time, after that, in order to get back to it, what you have to do is you come into your health app and basically you scroll down to, I think it's the sleep section, and then you come down. And the reason I'm mentioning this particular one is they finally done something that I've, I've been crying out for quite a long time. And that is basically they've added so that you can have multiple schedules. So previously, it's, say for example, if you set up a bedtime, because it used to be called bedtime, um, in order to track how many hours you actually sleep in. So this is the current one that is set. So similarly to how it used to work. So it tells you how many hours you'd end up sleeping. So my current alarm would normally go off around half four and I usually go to sleep at roughly around 11 o'clock at the moment. So I'd, I would be getting four hours 30. Now, previously what it used to do was it would do this for the full week. So you could select it and you could choose which days, but you couldn't have a second one set. Whereas now, yeah, so for this one, what you can do is you can come in and you've got your weekday setting. So previously you would have only had one of these. So you would have had either weekdays or weekends. You can't have both. Now what you can do is you can just keep selecting individual days as well. Obviously if it's already selected, so literally for, for each day of the week, um, if I just come back into here and let's change Monday for example. So if I wanna add just Mondays and I wanna say, yeah, I'll wake up later on Mondays. And then obviously it ticks over. And the good thing about this is the, the sound options are slightly different on this. So the actual alarm that you get, usually the, it gives you a different list. So you'll normally get a slightly different, um, I don't know if the, yeah, there you go. See, these kind of, these particular sounds aren't on the normal um, alarm clock. So I found previously when I used to actually use this, I used to set it just Monday to Friday and these particular alarms, they wake you up without actually making you want to smash your phone in the morning. So there's that that slight added benefit as well. But essentially um, it's, it's literally just the, the fact that you've got that function there, but it's down to the fact that you can actually change which days and have it set so then everybody you're not going to be waking up on the weekends at the same time as during the week usually on your days off you're going to sleep in a little so this now gives you that option where you can actually do that um, apart from that obviously there's there's been small small tweaks here and there a few icons have changed um, I, I saw that the the actual hands on you may not be able to actually see it on this particular um, zoomed out camera th lens that I'm actually using but the the actual icon uh, for the clock has changed slightly the calendar icon has changed slightly. Now it's got um, an abbreviation of the day as opposed to the full, uh, it basically it says WED rather than Wednesday. And the text for the, the number as well, I believe that's a little bolder now as well. But and it's, there's a few other bits and bobs here and there. A couple of the widgets have changed. So now if we just come into the widget section, uh, you now have one for files and you literally only have like this kind of uh, sort of medium or large options on that. Um, one other thing that I did notice was any third party widgets now match your existing kind of widget uh, look. So originally on beta one, the LifeX widget was actually squat, uh, stretched right to the corners. So it, it was exactly the same as it used to be on iOS 13. Whereas on iOS 14, it's now basically reduced essentially and it's it's matching in with all the rest of them um, i'm not so sure how i actually feel about these particular widgets just yet because um and yeah that was the other thing so the the smart stack automatically gets populated onto your your very top one i suppose i've not actually gone into edit so yeah it doesn't it doesn't give you any option to actually edit that particular widget out so it looks like the smart stack is always going to stay at the top on um on your widgets pane now and just looking at it apart from i mean it's mirroring this particular one that i've got but i don't have maps on that one so it's obviously adding in the maps into that particular one yeah i mean just looking at this obviously it probably is broken probably somewhat down to all my settings at the moment because this isn't actually a phone that i'm using all the time and probably somewhat down to just features not being fully fully up and running yet um battery life 
is really bad yesterday when i actually started this update i think i start i did a video yesterday that i posted where i basically more or less did a sp sped up um time lapse of of me installing it and the reason i did it was i wanted to just make note of what the percentage was when i started and i believe it was on 100 percent when i actually started update and it dropped down quite quite low um by the time it actually finished the phone was burning hot by the time you actually finished installing i've never actually experienced that in the past with software updates where the phone heats up to that extent but what i did was overnight the phone was fully charged i left it overnight and when i actually checked in the morning so i would have put it on charge uh well i would have put it down probably about nine half nine ish something like that yesterday and when i checked it at half four this morning uh the battery was on about i think it was probably around 18 percent and that was on standby so for some reason the battery drain has been crazy i'm not sure if it's the same on every device but since since i installed beta 2 um, on this particular device um, it was really bad yesterday now it was only the first day and sometimes with these kind of things you do have to give it a couple of cycles before it'll actually fully kick in and settle down and also obviously if you, when you're actually making use of it i've not really had a lot of use of it because i've i've been at work today but generally most things they, they appear a little bit snappier so they, while it wasn't terrible before there were a few stutters and lags um drop frames in the the, the ui um, that basically appear to be fixed now so gradually it looks like it is getting better i wouldn't still recommend this for anybody's daily driver i was tempted to actually upgrade my uh, update my um 11 pro max just to just to test it out just to see what what it's actually like uh, because a lot of the features obviously aren't available like the back tap features the camera features a lot of the camera features with regards to the setting your white balance and things like that not your white balance sorry your exposure so uh, that there, there is an option on the newer ones where you can swipe out obviously they don't have these down the left hand side and when you swipe up as as you would with for example with that it gives you an option to actually set your exposure level and lock it in um, that is a feature that doesn't appear to be available on this particular device just because of how old it is essentially so there are some features that obviously i can't i've not been able to trial out to see how how well they work just yet yeah that's one of the bugs so for example like the weather the weather widget when when i first actually um installed and rebooted in weather widget was actually tripping out quite a bit so if i just click into that it looks like it's working there and then th there you go so then it just eventually refreshes um something else i did see just in i think it was just on twitter and somebody posted where looking at this the fact that it says air quality one low a lot of people are kind of thinking that oh that's really bad whereas i, I suppose the, the the writing the actual text the way it says air quality and then low would suggest that the air quality is bad whereas i suppose if you look at the colors i would assume that again towards this side of it of the chart is is where it's going to be bad but yeah i think the wording of that particular section isn't very good so they could probably they probably want to take a look at that but there is a, a bit more information here now in compared to what you got on ios 13 i think it was probably literally just this top section and i think maybe you had what, uh, the temperature what it felt like but you didn't get any of this uh, wind pers uh, precipitation and pressure may have been there i'm not 100 percent sure but so, some of these that that section there is definitely extended that obviously wasn't there before either i've not really paid attention enough to see whether the weather itself is any more accurate I don't know whether UK is one of the ones that are going to benefit from Apple's takeover of, um, was it the Dark Sky app that they actually bought out? I know there was a weather app that they actually purchased from, well, it was on both platforms, Android and iOS, and they ended up shutting down the, the iOS app, uh, sorry, the Android app, um, as soon as they acquired that company. So um, Dark Sky, I think it was called. Um, but anyway, um, it's got a few little niggles little lags um in terms of third party apps so obviously i've been testing it with regards to uh, my nas drive so when i was um setting up a new hard drive in there so i've, I've been testing it with i was testing it with uh, ds cam and some of the synology apps and they all seem to work pretty pretty much flawlessly so I've not had a single app crash on me. Also, all of the YouTube ones, uh, the LG Wi-Fi app for my soundbar. Uh, you've got general social media, Twitter, uh, LifeX. I've, I've been using a couple of YouTube ones, DS File, DS Get. All of these work flawlessly, basically. So um, with regards to third-party apps, because it is so similar to iOS 13, I think a lot of them will just work anyway. And I have also seen certain ones like Infuse um have already been updated for ios 14 as well so the fact that it is 
I would say it's better than previous beta softwares in the fact that um, a lot of third party apps will probably work a lot better than what they used to in the past. I'm not blown away by any of the new features or anything like that. To be honest, even with the, some of these widgets, what I may end up doing is not even utilizing a lot of them. Um, especially the the smart stack kind of thing it can be useful the weather uh, sorry the calendar one in particular can be very useful and having the weather on your home screen can probably be quite useful as well because obviously if right now I'm, I'm on a jailbroken device once you lose the jailbreak you no lang longer have complications and things like that on your, your lock screen so just being able to come in and have a look at that is, is probably probably quite useful but it's not something that I, I probably couldn't live without so even if I went back back to more more of a, a less cluttered kind of look but obviously you've you've got the issue then where at the moment if say for example if you put some of the widgets at the top it does pull all your icons down so it makes it reachability a bit easier but and and obviously on the the the, the pro devices you, you can get a lot more rows in so you can get a lot more icons but obviously it's taking up two rows there as well so um i suppose it comes down to um what you end up using how, how much you end up putting on this first page if you want to have a second page or whether if you want to just leave everything for your for your app drawer essentially um, and just use it that way these ones um, they can be a bit hit and miss in terms of when you download a new app they always pop it into this top section um, and then you there's options where you can choose whether you want to actually have it saved straight onto your home screen or whether you want to drop it straight into your app library but um, that that can be a little hit and miss but as for me for the most part there's a, a core set of apps that i generally tend to be using most of the time and then all the other ones i just delve delve into and just it's just muscle muscle memory where i remember where what they look like where they were so um well, once this does actually kick in fully obviously it'll, it'll take a little bit of getting used to but i'm I'm sure it's something that um after maybe a week or two you, you'll it'll be second nature and you won't even think about it but yeah i'm not massively blown away currently by any of the sort of ui elements but obviously the the home kit improvements that they've made so far are very good I'm, I'm hoping that this is a bug and the fact that um what happened yesterday with regards to how the switches pop up the, so the scenes pop up rather than having it like this where this is this is i had the option to actually choose which ones populate here then i think it'd be a lot lot better than having it where it actually switches throughout the day there you go so you could just see there so because i actually use the light switch it switched to the first position so once i use that one what will probably happen is that will probably rotate to there and usually it only happens when you've actually got it got it down but occasionally obviously it does still happen when when you've got it open but what i would probably prefer is how i have these kind of nine and i've spoken about this in previous videos how i have these these top nine that pop up that they're the ones that i'd pr probably prefer to actually have listed here obviously you can't populate all nine but even if i can get the, the top six that that would still be better than what it does sometimes where it literally just gives you scenes and scenes for me personally are not as useful so i'd probably prefer to actually have a, a choice here rather than having it um where it just keeps switching uh because if even if somebody else is using it because obviously this is a shared uh home kit as well so i've got it shared with all my family so if they even though they don't use it as much if they were to switch say for example in the girls room if they turn their f uh, light or fan or something like that on it'll from what it's doing currently it'll probably end up popping those populating those in this section rather than having the ones that um i've got there currently which is these these are the kind of ones that I, I tend to use more so yeah that that's something that i'm hoping that somewhere down the line one other thing that i did notice is if you come into settings and you come into control center they now have this where's it gone yeah so they have this extra option for home uh which is kind of kind of strange because if you look at what that actually does so you've got your your built-in favorites home there and then it literally adds in the same thing but it's when you tap it it's literally trying to open the app so if i if i click it at the moment it literally just opens the same thing so that to me at the moment seems like it may be a bug and possible or possibly that could be getting replaced and you might have to actually choose to have that particular icon and move it wherever you want to move it but at the moment obviously literally th these two are doing exactly the same thing the only difference being this is a lot more responsive where you just tap it whereas when you tap that one it, it's it's a bit more laggy in terms of how it responds and sometimes 
needs you to actually hold on it in order to open it up but yeah these these were just a, a few of the things that i have noticed as i say because i'm not actually using this full time as my primary device i'm probably not finding some of the other things in there that possibly could be beneficial as well but i just wanted to focus on a couple of things that i did notice and i'll probably do a similar thing with all the the uh, betas to come basically where i'll just focus on the things that i think are useful to to me and anybody else out there who's using the HomeKit app and the HomeKit appliances and this is of use to them. So until the next one, thanks very much for watching.